good news, it's really hard to build a PC that fails to reach Counter-Strike 2's minimum spec. The requirements are so low that they're actually hard to buy for these days. But I managed to achieve the minimum spec using this setup right here. Let's talk you through it. I've mentioned before how vague this processor requirement of four hardware CPU threads is, and the way some of you have argued about what hardware threads means only reinforces that. If they said cores, then fine, I'd agree that this would mean that you need a four core processor. But four threads? That can be achieved by just two cores using multi-threading, and hence the confusion. But that's fine, I'll test both configurations. But for a start, I'm using an Intel 12100, which is a modern, fast 4-core, and can be had for around $100. Not a high requirement at all and a very capable processor at that. I actually had to deliberately sabotage it in the BIOS in order to only have 4 threads to play with. CS2's 85GB of storage space requirement sounds weird, because when I check, it's only using up 34GB. Maybe more is required during installation. Maybe Valve predicts this is how big and bloated CS2 will eventually become. Who knows? I used a 120GB SSD because I signed myself up to doing a minimum spec challenge and so had to commit, but I don't suggest you do the same. While it didn't have a problem installing and playing the game on this, with just 31GB of storage space free, it wasn't pleasant. If you're wanting to do other things with your PC besides Counter-Strike, then I'd suggest going for a larger SSD, because it sucks to run out of storage space. And SSDs are as cheap as chips these days, though who knows for how long. Even the 8GB RAM requirement was hard to meet. This rules out DDR5 memory which seems to come in a minimum of 8GB per stick, and since we need two of these f***ers, I had to go for the slower DDR4 standard instead, and a motherboard to go with that, all simply to get two sticks of 4GB. The hardest bit for me was finding a graphics card with just 1GB of VRAM. These days 4 is the lowest you'll find, and this is already considered insufficient. But this only makes the 1GB of VRAM requirement all the more mysterious. Does this mean you need a card that's roughly as powerful as 1GB cards used to be? Or does it mean the game literally needs 1GB of VRAM, but that a card from the 1GB era is unlikely to still be powerful enough? I got the 1GB Radeon 260X. This tier of card was mid-range when CSGO first came out. This isn't quite the most powerful 1GB card you can get. I believe a more powerful 1GB 7850 exists out there somewhere, but this will do. So with this all set up, I tested CS2 on this PC. Deathmatch against bots was okay, as opposed to being bad or good. The first 10 or so seconds were full of stutters which were pretty unplayable, but they stopped soon after. The frame rate became somewhere between 60 and 90, which was consistent enough, but it never made the game feel quite as snappy or as responsive as a high-end PC would have been. I didn't know if I was shooting too early or too late with my flick shots, which meant I had to spend a fraction of a second longer repositioning before clicking the button and so on. It was playable but not competitively playable. I've recently done a huge great video on input lag, and if you watch that then you'll know that there's far more to it than simply benchmarking your frame rate. Getting a faster monitor greatly improves the experience, even on slower PCs, but so does minimising the bottlenecking that's going on inside your PC, which can be done using techniques like reflex and anti-lag, but can sort of be done the ghetto way by limiting the game using a console command like FPS Max 60. This went some way towards reducing the lagginess of my experience. Contrary to popular belief, this isn't because the frame rate is more consistent. It's more that the input latency inside your PC is being reduced by putting the speed limit at the start of the process instead of at the very end with something like VSync. But even with these tricks, the experience still wasn't competitively viable. I've heard that smokes are the bane of slow PCs' lives, and they definitely did drop FPS down to the wrong side of 60 on this setup. If you want the edge against people on low spec PCs, then chuck smokes everywhere for a sizeable latency advantage. I also shot at the water on overpass, which I know can bring even my 4090 down to its knees, but at lowest settings this had surprisingly little impact on my frame rate on my poor little minimum spec PC. I didn't subject teammates to the pain of testing in a competitive match, but I did boot up a 10v10 casual server, which is something of a worst case scenario anyway. There are players and smokes and fires and particles everywhere. The frame rate seldom dropped below 50, but the action definitely felt like it was leaving me a bit behind. I briefly tested dropping the resolution down to something silly, and again after the first 10 or 15 seconds of stuttering, the frame rate improved and remained consistently acceptable. But it's like, come on mate, the frame rate might be triple digits, but this viewing experience is no longer acceptable. I'm confusing single pixels for potential players, and everything dances when I move. I wouldn't play it like this, so why would I recommend it to you? So in short, a minimum spec PC delivers a minimum spec kind of experience. You still have enough power to be able to decide between a better looking resolution or a faster looking frame rate, but your options will be limited and everything you choose will be a noticeable sacrifice. So let's get rid of the 260X. There's just no point in testing anything else with this card when I know the experience still isn't going to be good enough. 
I'm swapping it out for the Radeon 6500 XT, which is a new but troubled card. Before I talk about why, let's put it to the test in Counter-Strike 2. And the first time I loaded the game up with this card, there were a few seconds of intense stuttering, but beyond that, this card performed admirably. I tested low, medium and even high preset, and it held up under scrutiny in Get Shot in the Back Repeatedly Simulator, also known as Dust 2 Deathmatch. These frame rates may not be the highest numbers in the world, but I didn't feel it was interfering with my ability to aim and to shoot. I'm just bad at the game these days. I personally think that MSAA two times is a mistake for medium preset to use, and I would rather it used CMAA instead, because it should run a bit faster and should provide a more even blurriness coverage, which works better with the FSR upscaling. But that's just me. Take from this what you will, I'm not even sure it's the graphics card that's holding me back at the lower presets anymore. In fact, I take this all as a sign that, although minimum spec, I've achieved quite a balanced minimum spec setup, where the processor and graphics card are equally and are thus holding each other back equally, depending on the settings used. Remember, I'm not benchmarking the processor or graphics card here, I'm testing them both together in a real world gameplay scenario, because that's exactly what you'll be doing whenever you play this game. I also booted up Casual 10v10 because that's surely got to be a worst case scenario with smokes, molotovs and insults flying about absolutely everywhere. My only issue was that people kept picking Mirage and I found it very difficult to test any other kind of map with a full server of people. But in the hours I tested the Radial 6500 XT4, across various stressful rendering and psychological situations, it held up surprisingly well. You can't capture footage with it since it doesn't have a video encoder, I'm using an external capture card instead. I can't vouch for its performance when constrained to PCI 3 either, but in my little minimum spec setup that I built and played on, I probably trust this card more with CS2 than I do with CSGO. But, and here's the but, I'm scared of this card because it's cut down in so many ways and its performance drops off so quickly once it reaches one of those limits, that even when it is working well, I'm worrying about how close to one of its limitations it might be running at. Will it bottleneck when I don't want it to? And it isn't always about what it's rendering, it sometimes feels like it's being slowed down by what it isn't rendering. In CSGO, this card would suddenly drop from hundreds of FPS down to below 60 when stood in certain spots of Danger Zone maps and on Ancient. Now, since CS2 doesn't currently contain Danger Zone maps, I've got to test Ancient as an indication of how it may or may not perform in future CS2 maps and scenarios. And for the most part, it ran absolutely fine. I even risked high preset, but this was the one time I encountered unreasonable slowdown with this card. It was still 60 or more FPS, but it definitely felt laggier, and the framerate dropped more than it should have done when I was looking towards the centre of the map from around the outsides. I really wanted to get to the bottom of which settings exactly were causing the slowdown, and I don't think it's just one setting, but dropping the anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion down to lower settings, which are the two most demanding settings in this game, seemed to fix it, or at least to greatly improve the frame rates. So there are already hints that the 6500XT may struggle with higher settings in more demanding maps. Okay, just use lower settings instead. I played through a whole casual game of Ancient, and did rather well despite being rubbish at this game, and while gaming on a 6500XT on a 60Hz screen, and that's a more robust test than any benchmark is. So from the testing I've done, I can only conclude that the 6500XT is a viable budget card to run CS2 with, for now at least. The future may not be so positive, but I'm still not sure I would recommend this card, because recently graphics card prices have dropped a bit, and others are now priced more reasonably, and I suggest stretching just that little bit further to get the Radeon 6600 instead, which will be far more capable and much more reliable just in case, but I'm happy to trust the 6500XT to power me through the rest of this video. Time to see what happens if I game with just 4GB of RAM. For science. And it seemed like it did something different to my PC every time. The first time it blew screen of death. The next it made my Nvidia's monitor's backlight not turn on and I got scared and I tried again. But the third time it worked, and I got to play CS2 with just 4GB of RAM. What an exciting life I have. It took quite some time to load the game, everything felt a bit more sluggish, kind of like the PC kept dozing off and it needs to be prodded to stay awake, and when I finally got around to playing the game, I can't say I felt lagged like this in a very long time. It sometimes felt like my actions were lagging behind the action, like instead of me controlling my PC, control was briefly switched over to somebody else in the room who was doing their best to mimic my mouse movements. The game would freeze for a split second sometimes when I died, or sometimes when I shot, or when I switched to someone else's view in spectator mode, but for the most part it was still surprisingly playable, and the graphics preset didn't seem to do much to change the RAM requirements. So there you have it. You can play CS2 with just 4GB of RAM, but please don't. You deserve more. Plus, RAM is cheap as chips these days. Get as much of it as you can eat. Next I wanted to tackle the issue of processor threads, 
to finally prove to all those people on the internet I've been arguing with that I was right all along. So far in this video I've been testing 4 cores with 4 threads. What about 2 cores 4 threads? Here are all my results. I kept going down and down and when I finally attempted a 1 core processor with hyperthreading it simply hung on the loading screen. What did surprise me though was how well 2 cores still ran and how little difference there was between 2 cores and 2 cores 4 threads. So I've learned that Counter Strike 2 can be run with a minimum spec system at about 60 FPS. But the devil is in the details and we have to ask, is that good enough? For extremely casual play, possibly on simpler maps or on more casual game modes, it might be, depending on who you are and how you're used to playing games. But for me, this level of performance falls down a weird crack where it would be disingenuous to say it isn't playable because it's 60 to 100 FPS, it's playable. But then it's equally disingenuous to say that it's playable because it's a laggy feeling 60 to 100 FPS, which is a deal breaker when the competitive nature of CS2 is all about its flick shot, reflex based combat. With the graphics card, you'll want to be above the minimum spec, which isn't hard to achieve these days. I chose to test the Radeon 6500 XT because it's the slowest current graphics card you can get, apart from the 6400, ignore that one. And while this is well beyond the minimum requirements for CS2, it's still in that zone where your experience with it will greatly vary depending on the settings and resolution used. But this card has helped me to establish a boundary. If anyone comes to me with performance issues and their graphics card is weaker than this card, then I'd suggest an upgrade to them. But if their graphics card is more powerful than the 6500 XT is, then it's likely to be something else in the system that's causing their woes. As for the processor, it performed exactly as I expected, which if anything complicates the minimum requirements a bit because it shows that if your processor is modern and fast enough then you can get away with having fewer than the 4 threads Valve is claiming you're meant to have. You won't want to have fewer, and you'll find it difficult to find a processor with fewer, but you can do it. I do believe this requirement was left a bit vague to account for the immense difference in power between a 4 core processor 10 or 15 years ago versus those that are around today. But this shouldn't be an issue, because like I said every modern processor today should have at least 4 threads minimum, apart from this one. It's now mostly a matter of power because there's a big difference between a 6 watt CPU and a 200 watt one, and there could be people on thin and light laptops who have more than 4 threads in their processor but who will still be unable to get acceptable performance, because they're on a thin and light laptop that isn't intended for gaming. I'm yet to encounter the infamous stuttering that so many people claim is plaguing their Counter Strike experience. Don't take this as me thinking it doesn't exist, I'm just still looking for it. There are still Ryzen processors to test, still the onboard graphics, and still stuff like Linux and Vulkan. We'll get there.